Hello, I'm Kyle. We are ABS, Algae Biofertilizer System. My group consists of Alina, Jennifer, Vanessa, and I. We develop a system that optimizes the growth of algae and converts it into a sustainable fertilizer. It starts with growing the algae using wastewater, the condition, or growing the algae using wastewater. The conditions of algae growth are optimized in order to grow as much as possible in as little time as possible. Then our system filters the algae and dries it out using sunlight. The final output is a fertilizer that combats chemical runoff while being sustainable, cost-effective, user-friendly, and easily scalable. There has been a huge increase in population growth, which results in a higher use of fertilizer. The total consumption of nitrogen fertilizer has increased by 840% from 1910 to 2014. Synthetic fertilizer has a high risk of nutrients being released into the atmosphere and water, resulting in pollution. Other negative long-term effects include chemical burns to crops and depletion of soil nutrients, as well as runoff and algae blooms. To tackle the, pro the problem of synthetic fertilizer use, we chose to explore organic fertilizer, specifically those grown with algae. By using algae as a fertilizer, we, able, we are able to minimize the use of excess nutrients released by 25%, which will reduce runoff. Algae is grown using materials that would otherwise be considered waste, making it economical as well. With modern, te with modern technology, the company Gross One Technologies has created a method to grow algae for for fertilizer while using wastewater. We are optimizing their system from the type of algae grown to the conditions under which it's grown to reap the most benefit from how useful algae can be and making it more cost-effective and easily accessible. We also found that currently the biofertilizer market is extremely lucrative with a current value of $2.6 billion and is expected to increase to $4.5 billion by 2026. Through our research, we concluded that the ideal carbon to nitrogen ratio is 25 to 1, which will in turn show a significant effect on the residue cover on soil and nutrient cycling. When looking at experiments using commercial fertilizer versus algae fertilizers, we found that algae fertilizer performs better. And algae is the best in terms of soil health because when it breaks down, it releases beneficial macronutrients, micronutrients, and high levels of nitrogen and potassium into the soil. Next, we chose nostoc as the ideal algae because it's safe to be, safe to be ingested, making it non-toxic. It contains a large transparent thick-walled cell called heterocyst that is found in the filaments of nostoc. It has the ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen, which helps increase the fertility of the soil. The algae also works well within 50 to 100 lumens of light intensity with a temperature of 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also one of the fastest growing species in most environment and can be utilized for improving the physiochemical properties of soil, as well as controlling soil-borne diseases, making it the perfect algae for the fertilizer. Our main contribution is creating a system that uses sustainable resources to optimize the growth rate of algae to be produced in mass quantities at a lo low and affordable price. It eliminates the need for synthetic nitrogen along with the polluting resources that it takes to produce, like natural gas. Our system is user-friendly, easily scalable, and sustainable to renewable resource use. For our scientific components, we tested and observed some of the effects of growing algae in a controlled environment versus an ideal environment. We also did a nitrogen test to determine how well the algae fertilizer provides nutrients against a generic fertilizer. We directly compared the two fertilizers and observed its effects on the growing produce, and for our technological components, we use a fire fluorometer to determine the, the algae growth rate over time, and we use sensors to monitor the light and temperature in our system. The last component we use in our system is a grow lamp that is specifically colored red and blue to closely mimic sunlight. This is our final system. It is a multi-level structure that maximizes area through horizontal ex expansion. The bottom level has a tank for the algae growth, and there's the grow lamp behind the tank that mimics the sun's wavelengths in the lab for optimal algae growth. The top tray is where wood chips are laid out that absorb moisture during the drying process to help speed it up. For lab testing, we also use a heat lamp to assist with the drying process, but ideally the sun's heat would be used instead. Next, we will give an overview of the process of growing the algae and turning it into fertilizer. It starts by growing the nostoc in wastewater and under ideal conditions. After five days, the wastewater is strained using a cheesecloth to catch the algae. Then the algae is scraped off the cheesecloth and laid onto wood chips under a heat source to dry and become fertilizer. Once it has fully dried, the algae is now fertilizer and is ready to be put onto soil. 
For our system, we did extensive testing and validation to ensure that all components work. We started by testing if nostoc could be grown in the wastewater we collected. To do this, we used a fire fluorometer as seen in the bottom right to record the growth rate of 10 samples over 10 days, all grown under the same conditions. The graph on the left shows the average growth rate of all those samples over 10 days. As you can see, the peak growth rate is, about, is at about five days and it decreases after. From this, we concluded that five days is how long we would run our system testing for at is, as after that, the growth rate is not maximal. We then tested different conditions for nostoc growth in our system by comparing the amount of algae grown after five days. The control conditions were at room temperature with indirect light and wastewater. This yielded 15.23 grams of wet algae. For the ideal conditions, we used regulated temperatures between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, as that is the temperature needed for nostoc to grow, and a 24 hour LED light to mimic the sun's light. And we once again used wastewater. From this, the system grew 32.14 grams of wet algae, which is a successful 111% increase in algae mass. All right, so we use radishes as the sample vegetation to be tested with the soil. In the demo to the right, you can see the growth over time, the top being grown with the generic fertilizer and the bottom with our algae fertilizer. The generic fertilizer sprouted first and it grew faster, but then the growth slowed down and eventually stopped. Meanwhile, the radish with the algae fertilizer spread later, but eventually grew faster and taller than the radishes with the generic fertilizer. As a form of validation, we implemented soil nutrient testing for specifically nitrogen, being that it is the most limiting and important nutrient that affects the growth. Our findings were that the generic fertilizer didn't provide enough nutrients to the soil and that the nutrients depleted faster than what it could provide. On the left, you can see the soil test results of the soil before we planted the radishes, and you can see that it is a higher level of purple, and higher levels of purple indicated higher levels of nitrogen that was provided in the soil. The test indicated very low levels of nitrogen in the soil after being used with the generic fertilizer, while there was more nitrogen in the soil with the algae fertilizer. As for project management, we shared most of the responsibilities together, and some were separated best based on our strengths. One challenge that we ran into was controlling the growing environment. Given that our system is biologically based, there were natural based occurrences that we weren't able to control like debris getting into the tank and just temperature control. For example, our tank heater actually broke and glass fell into the growing algae resulting in us needing to throw the batch out since we couldn't risk the glass contaminating the fertilizer. A potential risk was presented with the inability to monitor the, um, any type changes in in 24 hours, given that we couldn't be able to be at the lab at odd hours. And another risk when using the system is that sometimes algae will just not grow at an ideal rate. Now that we know our system works, let's talk about scaling our system up. Our first step to commercialization comes with our user manual with easy to follow instructions on system setup and process. When looking at the cost analysis, we found that after 145 uses, our system is equal to the cost of nitrogen fertilizer. And the next step to improvement would be for continued testing, just seeing what readily available organic materials can be mixed into the algae fertilizer to yield better results. And we would like to thank um, all the people listed below for all their support and guidance. And just thank you, any questions?